present to you, dear viewers, the egg, the bringer of life. All of us were spawned by some fashion of ovum, and many of us enjoy them for breakfast as well. And the reason for my discussing the topic of embryos is because that is precisely the title of tonight's fabulous film. Welcome to Creature Features. I am Vincent. This would be my dignified butler, Mr. Livingston, and the egg-snatching vixen on my port side would be the lovely Tangella. Back to my senseless diatribe in regard to eggs. Tonight we shall present 1976's Embryo, starring Rock Hudson, Barbara Carrera, Diane Ladd, and Roddy McDowell. A fabulously peculiar film concerning a mad scientist who takes genetic engineering a wee bit too far and creates his own Bond girl. But what I find particularly astonishing about this cinematic gem is that it was filmed entirely in color which, if I may dare to say, is a most welcome departure which breaks our recent streak of monochromatic monotony. If you desire better films, I suggest you consider increasing the film budget. I suppose I could do that, Livingston. However, in doing so, I would have no choice but to cut the budget somewhere else, most likely in domestic staff. And joining us for tonight's festivities will be legendary actor Patrick McEwen. You might remember him as the secret agent man and the prisoner. Patrick will tell us all no, about... No, he will not. Patrick McEwen is dead. Good Lord. Ten years, you say? Apologies. Livingston... The guest schedule was Patrick McGrew, a goat cheese maker from Jenner. He couldn't make it. My goodness. I mistook a fromager with danger man. I'm growing daft in my old age. Well, then, it would appear we have no choice other than to make it a family night. Do you know, Livingston, you will be sitting in the guest chair this time. And I truly hope our lovely viewers at home can possibly endure an evening comprised of only the three of us and a film. As grisly as that thought might be. So don't go away, because it's going to be another evening of Livingston's continuous grieving here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Hey, it's Spooky Boo. Trouble sleeping at night? Need a little help? Relax and listen to some spooky, scary stories. I have ghosts and goblins, witches and demons, crazies and clowns. Check out Spooky Boo's Scary Storytime at www.scarystorytime.com
there's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. And it's a Saturday night, and that means it's time for Creature Features. I'm so glad you're here, and we've got these two with us tonight because our guest died on us 10 years ago. It's incredible. He was it, not the guest. Well, you know, I saw on the paper it said Patrick McEwen. Pat McGrew. McGrew. What kind of name is McGrew? I believe it's Scottish. Scottish. All right. So anyways, we're having a family night because that's what we do sometimes when guests can't make it and typically it's because the road's out right typically typically right right so uh we've got lots of good things going on we've got tangella with us for the full episode how are you love yeah, she's not talking tonight for some reason she was a chatterbox all day long talking poor livingston's ear off but not tonight. In any case, we are showing Embryo tonight. This is a wonderful film. I actually watched this one before starting the show tonight. Oh, you know, I typically don't have time to do this. And today I had nothing to do. Oh. So I watched the film. So I will not give any spoilers out. But this one does not end well. I will tell you that much. So just be careful. And there's a lot of uh, cameo appearances as well. And we'll talk about those in the next one. But first, let's get to Embryo with our guests, Livingston, Tangella, and Tangella's Mad Rabbit. Stay with us. Oh, 
get you taken care of. She ran out in front of the car. I couldn't stop in time. All right. Oh. Were you asleep at the wheel? Careful. Turn on those lights. Okay. Oh. Oh. All right, just a minute, Paul. Spleen, little mother. I don't think you're gonna make it. Maybe your pups will have a chance. Paul? Is there anything else I can do? Get Gordon on the phone. Is the dog gonna make it? Sick, are you? No, 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 I'm fine. Get 20 micrograms of thyroxin, 30 million. Hold it a minute. Now, tell me again. 20 micrograms of thyroxin, 30 million units of penicillin, and 10 units of canine blood. And hurry up. Be there as quick as I can, Dad. So, what's happening? I don't know, but he called. First time since the accident. Really excited about something. Yeah, so was I. What are you doing? 
<laughs> it's called getting dressed. First Get you put back on to your... bed before you both catch cold. Oh, oh, no, nothing doing. We have unfinished business. You know, on the way home, that lookout point on Mulholland Drive would be the perfect place. Helen! Bum, bum. <laughs> well, I'm very adaptable, as well as being very sexy. <laughs> being pregnant does that, you know. Makes you sexier. God gives me strength. <laughs> Don't give it a second thought, darling. It is all taken care of. You see, God is a liberated female, and she is on my side. <laughs> It's open. What's going on, Dad? I'll tell you in a minute. Oh, Paul. What happened to her? She ran out in front of the car. I couldn't stop in time. I'm trying to save the pups. I mean, these things are alive? Two of them are. No. They don't resemble their mother very much. Well, you didn't exactly look like Robert Redford at that stage, either. They're alive. And that makes them beautiful. She's gonna live, isn't she? I don't know. She's holding her own. They did all that good. You are a mess. Huh? <laughs> Why don't you go get cleaned up? Oh, uh, Yeah, I, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Thanks. Is my future protege behaving himself? Oh, hardly. He's ornery as hell, starting to kick. You want to feel? Yeah. Hey, what does Dr. Cannon say? He says you're going to be a perfectly healthy grandfather. Grandfather? <laughs> hmm. Be back in a minute. Oh, God. Good to see him working again. You know, he hasn't been in the lab since Mother died. This is the first time that I have ever been in the lab. It is unreal. Oh, Nicole, where in all this are you? My sister's still here, Paul, with us. No, she isn't. And I'm still guilty. Does that make it easier for you? No. You still resent the fact that I walked away without a scratch? Nicole's gone. And I'm still here. You can't accept that, Martha. And neither can I. So you see, we agree. It's as simple as that. Looks like you lost another one. Oh, no. Me too. Go on home. It's going to be a long night. I'm sure you've got better things to do. How about some golf next week? Good idea. I'll call. And if you don't, I will.
must try something new. Maybe your last puff will have a chance after all. Only one fetus left. Five weeks or so developed. The mother is providing life support, but she can't live over 12 hours, and the fetus has no chance of survival on its own. So, in an attempt to speed its development, at 3.05 a.m., I commenced intravenous injection of placental lactogen. Placental lactogen is a growth hormone Nicole, uh, that is, Dr. Nicole Holliston and I were experimenting with at the time of her death. It will either cause rapid development of the fetus due to accelerated growth of molecular cell structures, or the patient will die within hours. Placental lactogen consists of polypeptide fragments with a sealer seam marker and has two disulfide bridges. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Oh, look, Livingston. Hawaiian Cruise Lines has a ship departing on July 7th for Honolulu. You should book us passage. You have a prior engagement, sir. You will be at Creatures Con. I will. I will! 
In fact, we'll all be attending Creatures Con on July 7th in San Ramon, California. Join us and a number of horror, sci-fi and TV superstars for this stellar event. There'll be all kinds of magical things on the itinerary, like contests and prizes, autographs and selfies, merchandise and movies, motorcycles and airplanes and elephants and rhinoceroses, ninjas and sumo wrestlers and... In any case, you don't want to miss it. Learn more at the website below and get your tickets today. Rhinoceroses? One can only hope, Livingston. See you there. Thank you for joining us and staying with us. We are watching Embryo tonight with Livingston and Tangella. Although it seems that Tangella has decided to take over one of uh, Livingston's jobs. How, how's she doing? Adequate. Yeah. He's not too amused with her using his tools. So in any case, uh, Embryo, what do you think of this film so far? So far? So far. Nothing much has happened. Well, no, he, he struck the dog on the roadway. Rather sad. It was quite sad, and I had to watch that twice now. Mm. No, but you know, I think it was simulated. I would hope so. No, the dog in this film is remarkable. Absolutely one of the best trained dogs I've ever seen on film. I think he's like a Hollywood superstar of some kind. And you've seen many. I've seen many superstars. Dogs. So, uh, Right, the uh, dog, new embryo, something's going to happen, something interesting. We'll see soon in the next segment. But uh, Please. So, Livingston, when you're not uh, being dusted on the head, what do you do around here? Everything. Everything. He does. I can confess to that as well. I, I believe you're irritating my guest. Thank you. You know, she means well. No, she does not. No, she's not bad. She's just misunderstood. Ah. Right. So, uh, no, so you, like, you're in charge of the household and you pick our movies. I usually read the summaries. The summaries. I don't really have time to watch the entire so film he myself. He does not watch our films. He chooses a film based on summaries. a small piece of and text. Re and reviews. And reviews. IMDb. You wouldn't IMDb. know what that is, would you? IMDB, it sounds like I'm Dibber. That's how you spell it, right? It's technology. Right. Well, IMDB, it's, I don't know about that site, but I do look at Rotten Tomatoes. Why? No, not actual Rotten Tomatoes. The website, it's like a review site for film. Ah, but the more Rotten Tomatoes you have, the better? Well, they're not actually Rotten tom Tomatoes online. They're like symbols, little indicators that tell you what kind of film. You know, I'm teaching him now. Typically, he's teaching me about computers, and I've turned him on to something new. Now, haven't I? Indeed. Indeed. All right. Well, what do you say? Should we get back to this film? Please. All right. Off we go to Embryo. It's going to get better. Watch. Like it or not, you're getting one hell of a chance at life. I hope you like it. Number one. Because of prematurity, and to alleviate possible shock, I placed number one in an isolette at 10.40 a.m. The growth hormone is discontinued, but nourishment is being fed intravenously. A sample specimen of cells seems to be without defect and the growth pattern normal. I've decided to recommence intravenous feeding of placental lactogen, the growth hormone, to study further how the rapid growth progresses. At 1.40 a.m. the 24th, 
The puppy is now six weeks or so developed, but is only two days and 15 hours old. growth hormone is administered, the accelerated growth is constant. When it's withdrawn, the growth pattern immediately returns to normal, with no apparent harm to the cells. However, I've decided not to release the results of this experiment until I'm sure placental lactogen, the growth hormone, has no side effects. Placental lactogen discontinued, cell activity dropped again to normal. Number one has attained growth comparable to one year. It's still in light tranquilized state. Will attempt to stimulate the consciousness by injection of nailing. Dogs and children always like me. She's obviously been well trained. You don't need me. Thanks for your help. away and go to bed. Number one's ability to learn is extraordinary. It may be an accidental side effect of the drug.
impossible. Difficult, but not impossible. You'd be jeopardizing your career, your whole life. The results could be worth it. Nothing is worth going to jail for. That's debatable. Nicole had three miscarriages before we had Gordon. They were all genetically perfect. But they died because they came into the world too soon. Paul, oh, I understand. Believe me, I do. And I know your dedication. But it is morally questionable to experiment with a living being. A six-month fetus is a living being with a chance of survival outside of the womb, but 12 to 14 weeks has no hope whatsoever. I'm not asking for anything that has a chance for life on its own. An accident where the mother is dying is what I need. An abortion, even. Listen to me. 20 years' work is beginning to take shape. The children that Nicole and I didn't have will in their own way live. Now help me, Jim, please. Maybe. And only if it does not put me or the hospital in a vulnerable position. Blood type A. Well, that may take a little while. I'll let you know. I have a temporary life support container in the car. I'll get it. Betrays a certain quiet self-confidence on your part. I knew you as a fervent doctor before you became a fervent administrator. I've got an attempted suicide down here who's not going to make it. She's uh, 14, 15 weeks pregnant and the right blood type. is the most advanced 
science and fetal research in the last 10 years. After running tests tomorrow, I, I must decide the best way of breaking the news to the medical association and transferring the subject to the clinic without implicating Dr. Weston or his hospital. I have no delusions about the legal problems I will have to face. terrifying thing is taking place. Despite the discontinuance of the growth hormone, the infant is still developing at an accelerated rate. February 13, 1 p.m. I'm still unable to arrest the child's rapid growth. The development rate is now approximately one year to each 24-hour period and seems to be accelerating with each hour. February 16, 2 p.m. Rapid growth, still uncontrolled. Rate now about two years for every 24-hour period. I've worked for 25 years to save life. And now if the girl lives, I've robbed her of a part of her life. I can't even justify bringing others in for consultation. It's my responsibility alone. February 21. 3.40 a.m. There has been a marked change in the cell activity over the past three hours. The rapid cell growth is easing off, but the existing cells are now aging and dying at a terrifying rate. My God, will it ever end? The cell action changeover from growth to aging is significant. Preliminary tests indicate the rapid aging may be receptive to certain combinations of DNA blocking agents. 30 cc of antimetabolite solution retarded aging for three hours and then became ineffective. February 23rd, 1 a.m. I administered 50 cc of 5-hydroxydopamine, which would be effective if given in a massive dose. However, such a massive dose would cause heart arrest and death within 24 hours. February 24, 7 a.m., administering 50 cc of methotrexate, a risk because it's a very strong drug and highly addictive. If methotrexate doesn't arrest the rapid aging, I have no choice but to transfer the girl to the research clinic. I can't cope with it any longer. It's been 19 hours since I administered methotrexate. I think I found the antidote. Accelerated aging has ceased with no withdrawal symptoms. I am, for the first time, optimistic. Why should number one and the girl react differently to the placental oxygen? The front chest on both. The main difference seems to be that the puppy fetus dependent on its mother existed on an artificial system. It's now been 36 hours since the methotrexate injection. Aging is still slow to... <coughs> Aging is still slow to a normal level. If it's permanently stabilized and she's normal in all respects, I shall keep her with me and prepare her as much as possible for the outside world. That'll be quite a task. The tranquilizers are discontinued. I will raise her to consciousness with a series of nailing injections. I have no idea as to the outcome, but I've, I've done all I can. Also, I'll begin subconscious teaching at this time. Or 16. 16 and 16 are 32. 32 and 32 are 64. Let us repeat. One and one are two. Two and two 
are four. Four and four are eight. Eight and eight are sixteen. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. This is Livingston and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Family Night on Creature Features. We'll get back to Embryo soon, but we've got to do that thing called letters where you send us a letter and typically Livingston would look at them, but tonight we are doing things a little bit differently. We've got Miss Tangella serving the mail to me. How are you? She likes doing this, you know. Maybe we should let her do it more often. Yeah, he's not the most enthusiastic guest I've ever had in that seat. I'm not complaining, however. Keep that in mind. All right. All right, Miss Tangella, what do you got for me? Give me some mail. You know, now if Livingston was doing this, he would have unenveloped it for me. You need to train her better. All right. Unenveloped. This is, oh, this is a long one. It's a handwritten letter on an unusual piece of paper. You can have this. And this is from... Uh, Eddie Costa Jr., he does not say where. No, Auburn, California. You know, we've been to Auburn. That's on the way up to uh, the snow. Indeed. You cannot go to the snow unless you go to Auburn first. I, I believe it's the law in California. I could be wrong. I don't know. Here we go. Uh, Dear Vince Tangella and Mr. Livingston, as a 10-year-old growing up in San Jose, California in the 70s, I used to watch Creature Features most every weekend. But then my mom started having friends over Saturday night and took over our only TV set to watch Saturday Night Live. You know, we lose a lot of viewers to Saturday Night Live. I, I need to watch the show one time to understand what it is. Uh, which totally bummed me out. Understandable, Eddie. I'm glad you brought back Creature Features now. I have my friends over and never miss a show. That's the type of fan we need. Love the format and YouTube and the intro song rocks. That was Zetro. We turn it up to 11 every time. You know, he's probably got one of those televisions that go to 11. Thank you all for the revival. Sincerely, Eddie Costa Jr. Well, thank you for writing, Eddie. What do you got for me next, young lady? A letter. Written in ink. No, it's written on printer ink. All right, this one is from Chris 
Buckley in Seattle, Washington. We have not heard from Seattle, Washington in some time. Thank you, Chris. Dear Creature Features, if you haven't already, will you please air the 1963 disaster, The Slime People? I like the sound of that. I remember it fondly from a Saturday afternoon back in the 80s. It can only have gotten worse and therefore better since then. Well, you know, they do age like wine. They get better with age. Bad movies and good movies as well. We'll try to get that for you, Chris. Thank you for writing. Oh, we've got a package. We'll take this and give me the package. All right, this one. Oh, this came from Billings, Montana. It's a lovely place. Have you ever been to Billings, Livingston? I don't believe so. You, you know, I wonder if there's a town called Billingston. That's the place you should go to live. Oh, oh. good one, sir. But somebody's going to like this. Oh, look, it's, it's a note from Batman. Indeed. No, it's Batman. All right. Uh, it's Clint Young, our friend in Billings, Montana. He goes, uh, Dear Tangella, I saw this plush bat the other day, and right away it made me think of you. So I went ahead and bought it for you. He not only has poseable wings, but he's almost as adorable as you are. Keep up the good work, Creature Features. It's a fun show to watch. Hope you like the bat. Enjoy Clint Young, Billings, Montana. All right, Clint. Well, I think you've made a young lady very happy. You know, Clint has an actual Batmobile. And he dresses up like Batman from the TV show. He dresses up like Batman and he does shows and he looks just like him. We, we want you on the show, Clint. You have to come visit us and bring the next bat in person. All right, is that for, it for mail or do we have one more? Pay attention to your job. Oh my goodness. She gets snippy when she gets gifts. All right, last letter of the night. Saved the best for last, didn't we? All right, this one is from Bruce Wexler in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Sounds like a lovely place. And he goes as follows. Dear Mr. Van Dahl, just saw the episode with magician Ken Gar. He was pretty good, but I was really hoping he would make your mouth disappear. The sound of your voice makes me wish the Allies won World War II. I mean, seriously, a British host for an American horror program? What's next? A French commentator for a wrestling match? A Russian reading sonnets on a poetry show? How about an Italian guy narrating a royal wedding? Watching your show is like eating fried chicken smeared in peanut butter. I, I'm not entirely sure how to take this one, Livingston. I would ignore it, sir. So I should not reply? No. All right. Well, thanks for writing, Bruce, I think. Is that it? And the Allies did win the war. Uh, all right. That's it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter, you can use the email address you see appearing here. And if you'd rather use conventional means or would like to send Tangela a bat, use the postal address you see here. We're going to get uh, right back to our film. and we come back, we're going to be stuck with these two ninnies. See you soon. Two and two are four. Four and four are eight. Eight and eight are sixteen. Sixteen and sixteen are thirty-two. Thirty-two and thirty-two are sixty-four. Let us repeat. One and one are two.
see you have missed the most wondrous part of your life. And that's called growing up. I shall do my best to make up to you what's been lost. Uh, Victoria. Yes, Victoria. Do you remember any of the lessons? One and one are two. Two and two are four. Four and four are eight. Eight and eight. Victoria awakened approximately 11.30. She seems alert and upon preliminary examination functioning at a normal level. Heartbeat is normal, lungs clear. <coughs> Noticeable laxity of muscles from immobility. You may as well stay with Helen until I get back. Okay. Right. Take care of yourself. Oh, and be sure to call us from Denver. Oh, uh, uh, yes, I will. Uh, I'll call you when I'm coming back. You're going to be so busy fixing up the nursery for my grandson, you won't even miss me. <laughs> oh, I just remembered. There was the cutest little frog in my head. It would be perfect for a little boy's room. Wait till I get home.
start learning to communicate. With the house to ourselves, I'm trying to express of life. It's easy to forget that the most simple things, things we take for granted, are totally unknown to her. She is incredibly perceptive, her mind like a sponge, open and ready to absorb everything. Yet, there's a plus factor in all of this. While most of us are capable of using a fraction of our brain capacity, she is able to utilize hers 100% or damn close to it. There are no barriers, no unconscious blockages, perhaps because she missed the social and environmental restrictions we had imposed on us when we grew up. It's not an unpleasant task to teach such a willing pupil. Continued tests indicate the aging is progressing at a normal level, and there are no signs of addiction or withdrawal from methotrexate. I'm terribly relieved. This is a microscope. Microscope. Her intelligence and comprehension are overwhelming. A combination of total recall and the ability to utilize the information logically. She is not developing emotionally as rapidly as mentally, but I assume this will come with time. And there are your cells, and they're all normal. Hello? Well, Paul, where are you? Are you being properly devilish? <laughs> no, I'm still in Denver. Tell Martha to enjoy herself. Take a rest from the house till I get back. I may stop off in Salt Lake City for a little while. Yes, I'll let you know. What? Oh, no. No, oh, I'm fine. Love to Gordon. Goodbye. What did you think of it? An interesting story, but not very logical. <laughs> This Bible is much more than just a story. It's an account of the way the world actually began. From what I've learned, that's impossible. Well, you're not alone in thinking that way. But to many, the moral values are what's important. Moral values? Yes, the... <sighs> in time. Victoria, I like my name. Why am I called that? Because you were a victory for both of us. Come outside. There's a whole world for you to see. Were there times when you were afraid I wouldn't be a victory? Oh, from the beginning. You see, I never really expected you to be born. And then your life took hold. It wouldn't let go. It moved at such speed. I didn't think I could stop it. You know, there was a chance there where you could have been born, lived, and died of old age without ever knowing you'd exist. Couldn't you have gone for help? If the methotrexate hadn't worked, I would have. But thank God it did. Why, thank God? What would have been so bad about going for help? I'd have put you into a clinic. There you'd have been a strange happening, an exhibit. Something under glass to be looked at, examined, experimented with. A freak. A freak. I would have hated that. I know. Can it happen now? No. Oh, one chance in a million, but that's as good as saying no. Your cells are normal. <laughs> You're not supposed to eat that. A flower is supposed to be looked at and admired. Like this. See? Still, we're going to have to tell people about you. Can't keep your secret much longer. That's going to be a problem for you, Victoria. I'm sorry for that. You see... You're unique. You may never happen again. And from what you tell me, I may not have happened at all. Live and died without ever being? Yes. Perhaps if you'd been taken from the womb, you were more developed. Say, six or seven months, the growth hormone wouldn't have reacted as it did. But that's something we'll never know. A six-month fetus has a chance for life on its own. To experiment and fail at that stage would be murder. And that I will not do. But still, you are to tell others about me. Still, I am to be the guinea pig. No. I 
won't allow it to go that far. shortly after you were taken from her. And her real name? I don't know. They were never able to trace her. My father? Your mother never would say. Who knows about your experiment, about me? No one. I really don't exist, do I? of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. Quite good, Tangella. Tangella decided to run down to the mart and get us some movie candy. And she got me raisinets. I love raisinets. However, these are different than normal. You didn't just fill up a box of your goat droppings, did you? That would be heinous. Indeed. I'm going to trust you this time. What about you? You're not going to eat your milk, Duds. I'm watching my figure. I figure I should watch my figure as well, but I love Raisinets. Welcome back to the show. We are still watching Embryo. What are you thinking of this movie so far? It's strange. Strange. It is strange. Somebody could grow, grow a child in a giant test tube. Would you like this film? Of course she does. It's got animals. It's got a trained dog. But, uh, you know, this film is unusual because it's got cameos all throughout. Like, coming up, we're going to see Roddy McDowell, but he's only here for a chess game. That's it. That's all he does. He plays one game of chess, and he storms off angry because he lost. Oh, I'm giving away spoilers, aren't I? Okay, maybe he loses, maybe he did not. We'll see. But there's a cameo with Dr. Joyce Brothers. Remember her? I do not. No, she had. she's like a psych famous psychologist, psychiatrist. She helps people. Do kind what? of like you. Livingston helps people. It is my job. Most people. And uh, Tangela's going to like the dog parts coming up because there's, there's more dog. Right? There should be more dog. 
All right, well, uh, I'm just rambling. These are terrible guests. We need to, like, find an emergency backup guest because you're not very interesting, Livingston. I have met a lot to do, and uh, you are correct. I am not very interesting. Well, no, I, I think you're quite interesting, but you, you don't exuberate that, that special aspect of yourself. What do you wish me to do? Oh, tell us, tell us what life in Germany was like. Why? Because I've not been in a long time and I forgot. It was quite nice. Look at him. Quite a guess. All right. Well, now we know why Livingston bottles and Tangella eats gobstoppers. In God's name is a gobstopper. I don't think I wish to know. I think it's sugar and glue. Anyways, all right, let's get back to the film. Embryo, 1976. Off we go, right about... Now. February 23rd, 1 a.m. I administered 50 cc of 5-hydroxydopamine, which would be effective if given in a massive dose. However, such a massive dose would cause heart arrest and death within 24 hours. February 24, 7 a.m. Administering 50 cc of methotrexate, a risk because it's a very strong drug and highly addictive. If methotrexate doesn't arrest the rapid aging, I have no choice but to transfer the girl to the research clinic. It's been 19 hours since I administered methotrexate.
That's what she said. She saw you? No. She called out her name. I hid in the lab, but she didn't come in. Good, good. Nobody must see you. Here. Go on, go on. Paul? What? Will you please go away somewhere? I should like to see some of the things you've told me about before. Before what? You know, when you have to tell others about me. All right. We'll go this afternoon. <laughs> it's time you experience being around other people. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try not to embarrass you. Thank you. <laughs> but too short. I love that when many of it anyhow. The glass of the shops, the people, the marvelous little mission. It was all exciting and beautiful. But sometimes I felt I said the wrong things or asked the wrong question. Once or twice people stared at me and I... Uh, did I make a mistake, Paul? No. No, you didn't make any mistakes. It's just that people don't see the beauty around them sometimes. They take it all for granted. Your enthusiasm made them aware of what they were missing. Is that good? Very good. <laughs> we'll pick up Martha on the way home, and you can meet Gordon and Helen. We're almost there. Let's hear it. Victoria Spencer from hey. Denver, Colorado. Helen's deceased, age 25, unmarried. Studied where? At the University of Colorado, the College of Applied Science and the School of Medicine. It was established by Territorial Legislature in 1861, but the first cornerstone was not laid until... Hold it, hold it. Uh, just say where you went to school. Don't give a dissertation. Remember, never volunteer. Okay. Now, how did we meet? You were in need of a research assistant, and I was recommended by a professor of chemistry. His name? Dr. William Bigman. Good. Not the time. Paul, oh, hmm? this is what is called making one's debut, isn't it? My new research assistant. Delighted to meet you, Victoria. Oh, well, let me take your hand. Gordon, get some some drinks. Yeah. Uh, I think you've met Mike Seaman. Yes, yes of course. Hi, Mike Harvey. Nice Victoria Spencer, Mike Seaman. Victoria Glees. Martha? Paul has stopped off on his way home, and he has a lady with him. A what? A lady? A new assistant. She'll be working with me. Victoria, this is my sister-in-law, Martha Douglas. Paul has spoken of you so many times. Really? Well, I'm afraid he hasn't mentioned you. Where are you staying, Miss Spencer? She'll be staying at the house. Of course. I'll come home with you today. Tell me when you're ready, I'll get my things. Oh, no, you won't. Now, you help me plan this collection, and I'm not going to let you desert me in the middle of it. I'll take you home tomorrow. Oh, oh by the way, George just came in, and he's looking for me. Oh. I... Excuse me. Where'd you study, Miss Spencer? 
At University of Colorado. Colorado, that's my old alma mater. Tell me, is Dr. Hanley still head of chemical medicine there? I heard he was retiring. He was a cantankerous old bastard, you know, but a damn fine teacher. I look forward even more to working with Dr. Holliston. I still have much to learn. Tangela's nice and friendly. And I wish you would talk. Thank you. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Every single one of his medical bills, everything, is just all taken care of. We have phenomenal research, outstanding clinical care, and the generosity of public, which allow us to treat patients regardless of what it takes. At St. Jude, families never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food, because the only thing a family should worry about is helping their child live. Because of you. Gracias a ti. Because of you. There is St. Jude. Donate now at stjude.org. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. It's a Saturday night, and I ain't got nobody except for Livingston and Tangella because we have no guest due to a misunderstanding or a mishap with our fromagia cheese maker. I, well, I hope at least the cheese was good if we were going to miss it. He didn't bring any cheese because he never showed well, up. Well, I know he never came, but somebody must have done some research to see if this cheese maker was up to par. He's well known in Jenner. Well, I don't know him, so he can't be that well known. His cheeses are sold in lots of supermarkets lots all of over supermarkets. Northern California. All right. All right. Well, speaking of Northern California, how do you like living up here now? It's been what, two, three years now? Almost three. Almost three years. It seems like yesterday we moved up. Not to me. Not to me either, because I've been having fun and you have not. That's why. Tangela's been having fun. Indeed. Indeed. And, you know, I think she had less fun in Los Angeles because of certain troubles. We won't discuss those tonight. But anyways, the film, um, the film is progressing quite nicely, as I expected. We've seen the evil side of number one, the dog, and even Victoria a bit, right? I think they give German Doberman Pinchers a bad name. Why? They're always evil in movies. Hey, you know, every Doberman Pinscher I've ever met has been quite kind. Indeed. So I, I might agree with you on that. Although, uh, you know, Tangela likes dog movies. What do, you, what do you think of the dogs, Tangela? Oh, she's giving me hand signs? Probably. She's nodding and thinking that you know. She's nodding and thinking that we know. So, you know, one of the letters we get all the time is the, the fact that we are in Bodega Bay. And they always ask us about how many birds we see. Hundreds. Hundreds, of course. I mean, you can see hundreds in any big Thank city. You. Exactly. Right, right. But actually, you know, the thing about Bodega Bay is I see more bees than birds. I've counted them. They just step outside. You see more bees than birds, even at night. We have beehives to pollinate the garden. Oh, is that why? Indeed. Oh, who, who installed those? I did. Oh. All right. Well, perhaps you could install some bird hives as well, so it'll even things up. We shall discuss it another time. All right. Well, not this time, because we got to get back to this film, right? Right. 
Off we go, back to Embryo. You guys stay with us. Excuse me. I, uh, I've been in a holding pattern over you all day. What shall I do about it? Look, while we're mulling over all options, have some more. It's an Italian vintage, probably made in uh, Algeria out of bull's blood, rubbing alcohol. If a man with your taste and intelligence enjoys it, who am I to refuse? The sun shines on these dreary people as if they were worth a floodlight inspection. But for me, as, uh, as Oscar Wilde would say, give me deeper darkness. Money is not made in the light. Excuse me, I believe it was Mr. George Bernard Shaw. First I curtain of Heartbreak House? Uh, of course. I was just testing you in your past. Beauty plus intelligence. Very sensuous. We're going to enjoy a rousingly good hump. Hump? Ragged old. Yes. You refer to a, a favorite slang word that the Elizabethans used for fornication. I've read much of the subject. <laughs> you can talk to your computers like that, but not my guests, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you make computers? No, no, I, um, I make them work. I manage uh, Teletex International Systems uh, in my spare time. When I'm not confusing Shaw with Wilde. Or Ravelation humor with bad taste. I'm surrounded before I surrender to all women. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One of these days I'm going to remember what a presumptuous son of a bitch is and not invite him around. Only obsessed with a perfectly normal urge. Oh, so I've read. <laughs> Victoria, you are unique. And totally charming. Come on, let me introduce you to some nice people. Well, let's say nicer people. <laughs> Game. No, not really. Why could he give you my queen and both rooks instead of whipped you? <laughs> you may be right. Mm. No, that's not correct. It is feasible you could have given the queen and one rook, but not the queen and both rooks. Chess is one of the last bastions of male chauvinism. Would you like to challenge the champion? I've never played. She has never played, and yet she tells me I am wrong. I've read the rules in a book on chess, and a very interesting book by Alakine. Oh. No, um, I had a friend once, never skied. He read every book there was. First day out on the slopes, broke both his ankles. This is much safer. You just sit down, sweetheart, and I'll show you the rules of the game. Thank you. The, uh, this little dude that is a pawn. Now he can only move one space at a time, except on his first move. I know. Shall we play it? Huh? Well, they use the pacifier, but they refuse to be humiliated by discussing it. They wouldn't go that far, not even for science. Oh, your Victoria is something extraordinary. You should see what she's doing to Frank Riley. I love it. I hope he doesn't beat her too badly. Dr. Brothers, I read your column every day. It's wonderful. Thank you. That's uh, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. Game is off.
<laughs> Quiet! progression to the conclusion. There are some things you can't get out of books. To understand them, you have to be experienced. Be patient. <laughs> what a wonderful thing to see. His ego will never recover. Oh, welcome to our little group. We're original but very loving. You'll like us. <laughs> I know I will.
You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. You go through life as if you were constantly sucking on a lemon. Well, then I'll have to learn to sip nectar in the future. Two impressive degrees. And she's how old? 25. Brilliant, obviously. Let's see, Nicole was 30 before she got hers, wasn't she? Martha, this is your home. You belong here. And now Victoria belongs here. It's a whole new life for all of us. Why not become a part of it? person in a thousand would know the author of that. And I don't know anyone who's ever quoted it. Well, it could be perfectly matched. Perhaps. Oh, you need to ask them. May I ask you a question? You know 
how to operate a computer? Yes. Yes, of course. You uh, read a book about it, like chess. Yes, I did. background data here, and then the question. Pituitary gland extract from unborn fetus. Five to six months developed. Was uh, was the question as enigmatic as the answer? fetus has a chance for life on its own to experiment fail at that stage would be murder are you seeing me restaurants in Marseille. Thank you. Nice to be appreciated. In the cookbook, La Rousse Gastronomique recommends a touch more tarragon. I'll get the coffee. <laughs> what does your baby do? According to my calculations, I am five months. 25 days and about two hours pregnant. So that would make it due August 7th. August 5th. Paul mentioned that you and Gordon are going out of town next week? Mm. To Seattle. Gordon is beating the bushes again for university money. I'm going to tag along with him. 
if Dr. Callan will let me. He's a terrific gynecologist, but he has zero sense of adventure. He thinks that planes and pregnant ladies don't mix. <laughs> Dr. Callan. Yes. I understand he's very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not my imagination. Then you took it the wrong way, Martha. What's the matter with you? I don't know what's the matter with me. I didn't take anything the wrong way. I can't stand to be in the same room with that woman. I am why? Frightened. She frightens me, Paul. It's I not. I don't see why. For heaven's sake, she's been nothing but nice to you. You've chosen not to be nice to her. I have checked, Paul. Your precious Victoria isn't any research assistant. She never went to the University of Colorado. Just who is she? I'd like to know where she came from. She's as qualified as I am. This has been my home for 15 years, but that's it. I'm not going to stay in this house with her any longer. you got to choose, Paul, between your assistant and me. And at 8 o'clock in the morning, I am leaving for Minneapolis. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Creature Features, we are watching a film with the dog, with the dog. A dog film with the dog. Can you believe that? This, this small rodent of yours, Tangella, is shivering again. And I don't know what to make of it. But I think he's scared of the number one dog in this film, the Doberman. I could be wrong, I don't know. Right? Anything is possible. You know, he's normally a lot more chatty than this. But I think he's camera shy. Yeah, you've been used to this. And I think Tangelo is going to rectify the issue for us right away. So anyways, uh, the film is progressing quite nicely. We've got uh, Victoria using a mainframe computer to determine she's dying. And uh, I think uh, she's got a cure in mind, don't you? Perhaps. She seems very intelligent. 
Oh, that's a lovely chapeau. Oh, I'm you know, sure. She's quite the fashion designer. I mm. think she could assemble quite a nice outfit for you, Livingston. So uh, the film, uh, you know, 1976, that was a good, good year for movies. I mean, that was right before Star Wars came out. It's got Rock Hudson. I mean, he's famous. He kissed Doris Day before she died. Hmm. Long time before she died. But, uh, you know, a lot of these people are gone. Roddy McDowell is no longer with us. But Barbara Carrera is still with us, which is rather nice. Oh, I love this one. You know, Livingston, I never pictured you as Noompa Loompa, but now I can. How unfortunate. I think, I think you should keep that on him. Perhaps the next intro will do with that. So, uh, Livingston, you like the film, eh? As I said, it's interesting. A few plot holes, but yeah. typical. Well, what's interesting is that wig on your head. And there's a few plot holes in that as well, but we won't discuss them at the moment. Because Tangela's going to put the crowning glory on you. All right. I think on that happy note, we're going to go off to the film. And we'll be back soon. Stay with us. Must I?
understand I can rent you? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I'm not in the dice. Um, I'll pay you $200 if you come me to my home for the evening. For $200? You learn to like it. Um, come on in while I change. Thank you. But uh, no rough stuff, huh? I understand your condition. I doubt it. What do you mean it wasn't natural causes? Dr. Holliston, was your sister-in-law subject to extreme hypertension? Well, she was tense, yes, but nothing medically serious. She took sleeping pills from time to time. No reason for her to self-administer any other drug? In God's name, get to the point. What killed her? We found a massive dose of what we think is 5-hydroxydopamine in her heart muscle. Now, it's experimental. We don't know too much about it, but the drug seems to have a cumulative effect. It doesn't dissipate, causing cardiac arrest. Dr. Holliston, just a minute. There are forms to be filled out. This may be a homicide. So here I am. Please go, heaven. What's the matter? Uh, are you all right, Victoria? Please. I'll call you later. Where's Paul? In San Francisco. At a, at a medical conference. I'll call you, okay? Now, please go. Oh. You look so tired. Well, now, he is working you too hard. I'm going to make us both a cup of coffee. Wait. I'll do it. I'm sorry about earlier. Actually, I'm glad you're here. City Club in Seattle, please. Gordon. Dad. I, uh, I want you and Helen to sit down. You're at Martha. What? Well, what do you mean? Where is she? Oh, my God. Don't ask any questions, just catch the first plane home. You know, Livingston, you look somewhat like Joe Bob Briggs with that lovely chapeau i have no idea who that is he's he does like he does, he does look like what we do he he does like horror film type movie show oh how thing. exciting it is exciting and you know you could be competition for him who knows and this one my goodness tangela you think she'd want to sit in the chair and talk with us but she doesn't no she'd rather humiliate paul livingston Anyways, uh, the film, uh, interesting things have happened. She's, she's become Laura Croft, and she's become a womb raider. She stole that 
prostitute's baby. What a fascinating bit of humor, sir. No, it's not humor at all. It happened in the film. You know, I don't think Livingston likes this film. So next time we do this, we have to let Livingston actually choose the film, right? Or at least get Tangelo away from humiliating him. All right, well, we're going to be back after the next break. You guys stay with us, and uh, we're going to see some more of Embryo soon. Be back. Hair styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. I will if it's necessary. 
necessary. Why? Tell me why, Victoria. I want to live. I must. Why, Helen? Why the baby? They want to live, too. Helen can have more babies. I must have this one. Why? I'm dying, Paul. See for yourself. Why didn't you tell me? What could you do about it? Look at me, Paul. Look at me. Look closely. I'm dying. There was a frog in your creation. And you thought you had corrected it. But uh, I didn't you to the correct shape. And uh, I'm also what I believe is called a junkie. This is the only antidote. Pituitary gland extract from Helen's baby? This. What are you doing? I'm fixing you a larger dose of methotrexate. You're in pain. <laughs> Here to help you, Victoria. No, no, no. Trust me. No. What I need, you can't get me. By your own words, you called it murder. Get out. Please. Get out. Please. Get out. I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill. I just want to live. Please. Gordon, the oxygen. Oh.
Stay back. Give room to work, please. She's having convulsions. Oh, that isn't convulsions. She's having a baby. No, 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 it can't be. It can't. It can't happen. Die. God damn you, die. Both of you. It's your baby. It's your baby. And that brings an end to Embryo. That was not a very wonderful ending. Not for them. No, she, he tried to stuff her face in a pond to make her die. Well, she was already dying of old age. He didn't have to do that. He, he could have just simply put her in a rest home for 15 minutes and had been done with her. And this baby, we didn't see much of that. Ooh, I don't understand this film. Or his motivation. Why would he want to kill her? Psychopath. She knows psychopaths. What do you think? He was a psychopath or she was a psychopath? She was. Mm. Well, I suppose psychopaths, if they cannot be treated, can be drowned in a pond. I could be wrong. Anyways, uh, that's it for this film. But what do we got going on, Mr. Livingston? Creatures Con. Creatures Con next weekend. Uh, that's in uh, San Ramon, right? That is correct. Where, where is that, Tom? It's at the Marriott in San Ramon. The Marriott in San Ramon. You know, we did this last year, and it was wonderful. It's a wonderful venue. It's a nice Marriott. I'm not that Marriott's are not nice, but this is like an extra nice Marriott. It was in the Redwoods. It seemed like it was in the Redwoods, did it not? No, it was surrounded by trees. So it's it's like, uh, what, 30 miles, 35 miles from From San, San Francisco. Francisco. And we'll be there next weekend, and we'll all be there, right? Are you coming this time? Unfortunately. She came last time, right? Yes, she did. No, it's not unfortunate. The police are still looking for her. No, the police are not looking for her in this county or that county. So Livingston will be there. What are you looking forward to? My room. Your room, but we've also got uh, several stars that will be gracing uh, the hallways. That's true. Like, who do we got coming, John Tom? John Provost. John Provost, our old friend John Provost. So, who do we got coming, we Tom? Have Veronica Carlson coming. Veronica Carlson. She sat in that chair once. She did. She's famous. She's been in a bunch of Hammer films, and then we've got uh, yeah. Zetro's coming, right? That's right. Steve Zetro from Exodus. That'll be yeah. fun. Who else? Joshua Kennedy, who is the director Joshua of the Kennedy. film House of the Gorgon, which is the West Coast premiere. Joshua Kennedy. House of the Gorgon. House on the Gorgon, and they're going to be showing it. There. So anyways, if you're not doing anything next weekend, you should come. And if you are doing something next weekend, you should cancel those plans and come because the website is right here, right? Creaturescon.com. Boom. Anyways, uh, that's it. 
I suppose. Thank right, goodness. We are. Time to end the night. Time to put out Tangelo's can. You know, I've never lit that intentionally because, you know, that's a Bob Wilkins thing. No? Look at this one. She's always doing things her own way. All right, well, that's it for us tonight. I'd like to thank my housemates for doing the show with us. Hope you could come again. And uh, we will see you next time because we love you. Have a good night. So uh, Livingston, you know, doing these family nights is very convenient, actually. What do you think about doing them more often? I would rather milk goats for the cheesemaker in Jenna. <laughs>